morning all. Well, it's a lovely sunny day today. So I'm out in the garden playing with various solar panels. And uh, what I'm doing is also playing with a battery. This one here. Now this is the one that was in my battery stack. And uh, I put it on the Sealy BT-102 battery tester. And it came up as a failure. So I'm trying to equalize it. What I've got connected to the positive and negative terminals are one of my 80 watt solar panels and at the moment the battery voltage is 15.3 volts and I've taken out the plugs because I wanted to see which cells were bubbling. Now I don't want to get the camera too close because although I've got a protective cover on this camera you can see that it doesn't cover the lens so I could get splashes of acid on the lens so I don't want to do that but you can probably see that those two cells are bubbling away quite furiously uh, that one is two but these two are completely dead nothing's happening in those two cells at all and then this end one is bubbling away so what it looks like is the three to the left and the one on the right, the far right, are fully charged and the energy coming in, in the form of electricity, can no longer move chemicals from the plates into the electrolyte. So what's happening is the energy is being used to split the water into its component gases, hydrogen and oxygen, and that's what's bubbling out in these cells that are active. But in these two cells, either they're a dead short or so badly damaged um, that they're just not charging, or they're simply flat and need to be charged up. Um, it's hard to tell, but um, this battery is old. Now, there was a date code on it. Yes, this was the one that looked like it was from 2001. Uh, so it's 13 years old. So I've really got no um, reason to want to save this battery. So I'm just going to cook it. I'm just going to let it fry all day long on this big solar panel. And yes, that will gobble up some of the water in the electrolyte. But it'll be very interesting to see whether these two inactive cells come to life later today. Well, it's the next day now. And uh, yesterday wasn't quite as sunny all day as it had uh, promised to be but uh, something interesting has happened it, this has been on a sort of slow cook I suppose cell 4 which is that one is now bubbling away merrily bubbling away just as much as cells 3 2 1 and 6 but cell 5 is still pretty lifeless. Now it's going to be quite a sunny day today. Um, in fact I think they're saying that the UK is going to be a bit like Ibiza today which is very nice. So I think I'm going to leave this on the solar panel connected to the battery. Of course there's no charge controller so that voltage can go as high as it wants. Um, now I'm not going to be here for quite a large part of today but um, I might see if I can pop back briefly and uh, see how we're doing. I don't really want to destroy this battery. It'd be quite nice if I could revive that fifth cell and uh, start using the battery again. But we'll see how things go. Now this is interesting. I've uh, disconnected the solar panel from this battery just for a while and hooked up the 100 watt incandescent lamp. and. When I tested this previously, when it was part of my battery bank, uh, this particular battery wouldn't keep this lamp on for more than about 30 seconds. But this has been on now for about, well, about 15 minutes, I suppose. And it's holding the voltage up really quite well. It's 12.3 um, volts now. Now, of course, all the bubbling's stopped. There's a little bit of residual 
movement in there. Now I don't think that if cell 5 was a complete short it would be uh, the voltage would be this high. Okay the cell voltages are probably uh, way above what they generally would be but I think cell 5 probably is contributing to this potential uh, to some extent. So what I'm going to do is just leave this discharging for a while and then I'll um, put the solar panel back on this thing and give it another uh, long session of uh, overcharging as it were and uh, see whether this battery can be improved any further but I mean it's certainly a lot better than it was when I tested it a couple of weeks ago that's um, that equalization has uh, has really improved this battery so another day and another type of weather cloud we've lost our Mediterranean Ibiza weather and back to normal now so this had a day really bubbling away and cells 1 to 4 are good and cell 6 is good so it never managed to restore the fifth cell so I don't think I can use this um, in my battery stack still nevertheless it does make me think about equalization and I'm thinking about equalization in terms of putting it into a charge controller as a feature I suppose what I should say is that I don't believe that equalization belongs in a charge controller certainly not um, automatic it would have to be a manually invoked function where you press a button um, and I believe it would need an are you sure and uh, warnings about connected equipment that that might get damaged by the high voltage I just don't think it belongs in a charge controller um, where it just cuts in every so often one of the areas where the PWM5 has been popular is in boats because it's completely waterproof. And when I say boats, I don't really mean this kind of boat. I mean this kind of boat. If you know your product's going to end up in this sort of vehicle, you've got to be careful. You don't want to uh, take the battery voltage too high because there's probably going to be two or three grand's worth of navigation equipment on a boat like this and you don't want to be responsible for frying it. Now something occurred to me while I was doing this equalization experiment. I've been looking down inside these cells, uh, looking for bubbling, which is a visual indication that there's hydrogen and oxygen being produced. But there's something else, I reckon, that might be able to do that for me, so that I could make an automated um, equalization device. And that's these things. These are little um, Arduino compatible gas sensors. Uh, there's an MQ2 there and an MQ7 and they're very cheap. This one's £1.59, that one's £2.35. But if you look at the data sheet for these things, they're very sensitive to hydrogen. So here's a sensitivity curve for the MQ7 sensor. And if you look, the pink trace is H2. Well, I assume that's hydrogen. And the one above it, the dark blue one, is CO, that's carbon monoxide. And generally these things are used for sensing carbon monoxide, but actually the hydrogen trace has an even steeper slope than the CO trace. So this sensor is most sensitive to hydrogen out of all the gases. So it should be able to be shoved down inside the um, battery cell and used to uh, detect the presence of hydrogen or um, the lack of hydrogen. Now I suppose the obvious question is, would this cause the hydrogen to explode? Well, hopefully not. I mean, you don't need to create a tight seal. Um, and item six there on that list says anti-explosion anti network, which is a stainless steel gauze. So maybe a device could be built using six of these sensors, one dropped into uh, each cell, and it would simply run the high voltage equalization program until the level of hydrogen in each cell was roughly the same or if it failed to equalize all the cells within a certain period of time it would uh, just come up with an error. So there's an idea for another project don't really need 
another project at the moment. I've got far too many on the go as it is. But um, And there's the results of my experiment into battery cell equalisation.